Hi, I'm Carol and welcome back to my channel. Thank you for stopping by. I really appreciate it. I am here on Tuesday this week because I thought I was going to try to... I'm trying to not plan too much because I'm not good with following through with plans. But I was thinking that Mondays were really going to be a great opportunity for me to sit in front of the camera and share my projects. And I realized that Mondays are often federal holidays, which means my kids don't have school, but the husband's home, it's generally chaos, and we kind of treat it as a second Sunday. So, Mondays are not going to be a good fit for me, but Tuesday, which it is, is maybe going to work better for me. But in the meantime, enjoy this Tuesday that is a 2-22-22. Or 22 to 22, depending on how you run your dates as numerals. And I have five projects to share with you today. So let's go ahead and get started. The first one that I worked on kind of intermittently through the week, I never put any more than about 15 minutes of time in at any given moment, is Summertime Coverlet from Heart String Samplery. And this was in a tote bag with me the entire week. I took it to all my kids' activities and just would do a strand of floss at a time as I felt like it. And anyway, here it was last week. And here it is today. And I'm gonna go back up. So you'll note that I have finished this flower. Thankfully, it was kind of one that was just destroying my desire to stitch and started working on this one. So this is the upper right on this project. This means this is the entire top. So only, I guess we'll say six and a half more of these to go as this one's actually making pretty good progress. And then I can get to all the stuff on the bottom, which will thankfully not be flowers. I am finding this one now that I have kind of cracked the code on how I like to stitch it, which is to say not trying to get anything done, just doing one one strand of floss at a time and it's you get further than you think you do particularly in this case I picked it up every day this week but again not for particularly long on it that's kind of nice it does also since the way I have my pattern put in basically a page protector so front and back and I keep the floss it's still on the card because it's uh gentle arts and this color's uniform blue so I just only have the one color so I just keep a Card of that in there all the time and it's really really portable but one of the times I was getting my tote bag to go out of the house I've had a lot of time out of the house this week my kids activities are just all over the place and I realized I wasn't really feeling it I was gonna be gone for this case this was hours with my butt plopped on bleachers side note those things are so uncomfortable I oh I always try to take a seat against the back of the gym, that way at least I can prop the wall up with my shoulder, which is much better than this slight hunching that I get, because that, that hurts and that's no fun. But anyway, I knew that I wasn't gonna wanna keep working on summertime coverlets, so I went ahead and put Prairie Schoolers, a Prairie Garden, back in my bag. And here it is last time. And here it is today. I did this solely as travel stitching, I didn't touch it at home. And I finished this motif. I'm very excited. Um, the only downside is I did find that from where it was last week, I had started working on this green right here, sat down in good light, and realized it was not the right shade of green. I had grabbed, there's two greens on these leaves. So the darker green is the green that's predominant through this pattern. The lighter one is literally the next color down in the uh, DMC floss, and the light I was at one night, I couldn't tell the difference. So, oops, <laughs> had to frog that. It wasn't that big of a deal, but it is a reminder to pay attention to where the numbers are written on my project card, because that's where I keep all of the flaw. I've been using the, actually, hold on, I'll just show it to you. I keep all my floss on very, I have done, oh, I've, I've done bobbins, I have done, just keeping them literally in the 
um, the original skeins and pulling from the skeins. For individual projects, I've actually found these kind of useful. I even use the magnet to keep my needle on. But I've nicely written the numbers. So I probably should have noticed that I didn't grab this green, but I grabbed this green. Didn't check. It's fine, but it's, you know, live and learn. That's uh, outdoor lighting in February. May not actually tell you what color things are. Whoops. Um, I have decided as far as this project goes that I now threw seven of the nine motifs. I am, I had originally started it as it was supposed to be a, sorry, that I was going to do a square a month. Obviously I didn't do a square a month, but I've also realized that this one, it's really cute. Each one of these motifs with only a little bit of dedicated stitching time takes me maybe two and a half days. They're not particularly complicated stitching, and I would prefer to just go ahead and get this one done. So, that will probably be seeing a little bit of progress over the next few weeks. Again, just because I'm ready for it to move on, even though it takes up most of it, I mean, it's going to take up an entire fact order here, but it's not what I consider a big project. Now, this one was a surprise to me. It wasn't, I didn't think I was actually going to touch it this week. And this is Country Cottage Needleworks Joyful Summer. I think last week I said joy, or Summer Joy. Yeah, it's Joyful Summer. But I have gotten to here. So mostly I took this color up. This is Bean Sprout. These are all classic color works. And I think I'm going to run out. I didn't buy enough in the first place. I'm going to need to go buy more. And last time I was, I had thought this process, I went to my LNS and realized that the bean sprout that they have on the wall looks ton same place I bought all this from in the first place. Uh, it does not have quite the same color as this. So we'll see if whatever they have in stock now works. And if not, well, I guess I'm just going to have to deal with the fact that it's uh, severely different. It's okay. Um, I did in choosing to take advantage of the variegation of the lighter color, and I I cannot remember the lighter green, but you'll note I actually stitched it in diagonals through here to try to mimic what I had done over here originally. It was very exciting. So my daughter, I mean, she's the one who started this project in the first place. There's even some X's here that the legs go the wrong way because she started it maybe. She would have been in third grade. Um, so now she wants it done. Like, not just sort of wants it done. She looked at me and said, well, you've, you're working on everything else. Are you going to get this one done? And I said, well, yes. And she said, well, can you get it done this year? Yeah, I guess I can get it done this year. So I wasn't really planning on doing any sort of like focus on a finish type pieces right now because I really am allowing... <sighs> A little bit of serendipity to guide how I what projects I pick up at any given time but I also have a little bit of mom guilt over the amount of things I've promised that oh I'll make for you I'll do for you and then that will get done so I'm gonna make said so this is gonna be a door hanger my goal is to have this ready for her by May 15th oh committing there. That's hard. Eek. So come back to that in a second. But I did because if I filmed this yesterday. You want to see any work. But um, Mary Billy is Autumn Queen, which you see here from last week, got to come out because this is going to be kind of, I think, the piece I work on this week. But I did get a little more done on her last night as I was stuck at children's events. And mostly, I've got to find a way to hold this better. Um, what I did is finished the 818 through here, and I'm now working on this purple of her skirt going down. I love this project. I love this project so much. I don't know why I had started, I don't know why I started and put it down in the first place. And I'm going to point out, um, I bought my pattern in 2002. 
like it has the original glossy photo. I remember if I saw this on someone's floss tube or if I saw it on Instagram, so I, and I hate when I don't remember where I see things, I really like to source it, but someone mentioned the description of the older Mirabilia and they said with the original Polaroid. And I wanted to cry a little bit when I realized that kids don't know the difference between Polaroids and glossy finish. Like, when I would get stuff developed when I was in like high school, and if I, the glossy stuff was like, okay, you went down to the drugstore, got the one hour, we never paid for one hour photo, but you'd got the cheapest developing package. If you could get the nice, like, sort of matte ones, and if they were really lucky, they had the white edge around it, and those were like the fancy ones. And <laughs> anyway, so the aside is it was just like this idea that, no, Polaroids are totally different. Anyway, so I've had my, I bought all four seasonal queens that were on the market in 2002. So uh, winter, summer, spring, and autumn in that order release. And my intent was to do all four of them. Well, I only have two of them done and it's been two decades. Whoops. Um, spring queen only took me four years. Summer queen, Summer Queen took a full decade, um, to be fair, she hibernated for a lot of that, but I, you know, that's how it works. So I started this one March 2020, hibernated for two years. My, now that I'm actually really pulling it back out and playing with it, this was always my least favorite of those four seasonal queens. I wasn't really in love with the look on the photo, but in actually stitching, I'm really really enjoying um I will find I find that the Mirabilias are a nice enjoyable stitch because they don't have well say there's no not really massive amounts of confetti but at the same time it's not just a sheer block it's kind of my in-between and it's perfect so that is going to be the piece I probably work on the most this week just because I am basically I really just want to get back to her I'd love to get closer to the bot this one I'm going all the way at the bottom first before I go up for her head so I kind of like to be able to you know make her look like a person and not just a blob but that means I need to finish the stuff at the bottom and I haven't decided so I stitch in a hoop I this is my first project where I'm going to be using whisper and I don't know how it'll go in a hoop like will I crush the fiber I don't know I haven't ever played with it so I'm trying to do all the DMC on the bottom first before I tinker around and commit so we'll see how that goes. Now, my big piece for the week, and this is a happy one for me, is my Haid um, winter, winter Kiss. It actually occurs to me a lot of what I, of my four, four of my five projects this week have a very seasonal connotation. Summertime Coverlet, Joyful Summer, Autumn Queen, Winter Kiss. Anyway, here's what was last time. And here we are today. Page finish! Woo! Actually, um, so page two over here, and actually a couple stitches along the edge here going into page three, but I am so, okay, so this picture is in the end all done in grayscale, so it's, I think, 30, 30, 34 colors? I'd have to go back and recount. It's not a huge amount of colors, but it is so confetti heavy. Like, the, to find more than two stitches in a row together that are the same color, it's, it's exciting. So I was just thrilled to be able to get to the corner of this. And when you're in the middle of it, I don't really, I mean, I get so caught up in each of the individual stitches, I don't actually see much of the picture. I mean, I'll see, like, the big things, like, these branches are pretty obvious. But when I was filling in this part down here, I didn't even see all of these little tree bits until literally I stepped back, blinked my eyes a couple times and looked in and said, oh, there's like more trees there. I didn't even notice. <laughs> so it's really fun, but I am, um, remember the part I said, the joyful part about working on a Mirabilia is that you have like all these long rows where you take the same color and it's, it just works. I mean, it, it's almost like, and then you get tired of that and you're like, okay, I'm ready to do the confetti. So that's where I've been when I said that I was just kind of allowing myself to go with where I want. It's been really nice. I haven't spent more than three days straight on any single project. I don't want to say 
they work on a single project. Um, Autumn Queen and Winter Kiss, I both, they end up in the frame, so I did get a um, stand frame, which, stand frame, frame, I don't even know what you call it. Anyway, so, um, a frame for holding my hoop, it's now the only way that it makes my cue snaps for me not wanting to chuck them in the trash, it's very exciting. Um, but those are the, so they'll kind of sit in the frame for a couple days. And then I'll find that about three days is the answer where I'm like, okay, I can keep going on this and what's going to happen is I will burn out, not just on the project, burn out on cross stitching. I pull it out, switch styles of what I'm working on, and it's, I don't want to say I'm almost tricking my own self into, oh, it's totally different, but they each have a different feel when I'm with the needle, so it's... I guess it's like a rotation, but it's a very casual rotation. It's been working for me, so I'm going to keep doing it, but I'm kind of hoping that that means that maybe I'll actually get Autumn Queen done this year. That's a hope, not a plan, because if it's a plan, I'll be upset when I don't make it. But there you go. So that's what I have that I'm working on from this last week. And this upcoming week probably going to be a lot of the same thing except for I'm not I'm not even going to touch Winter Kiss this week. Uh, it's wonderful. I'm really happy that I now have two pages done, which is about a page more than I ever thought I'd actually get to. I just have another 47 to go. So we'll let it rest for a while. And in the meantime, I have now saw I have a dilemma. Well, it's, I've kind of figured out how I'm going to solve the dilemma. So I'm going back to Joyful Summer here. I told you I wanted to get this done for my daughter. Now the problem is, there's a bird right there. Can you see the bird? I can't see the bird. The bird has almost no contrast to this fabric. Now, I bought this. I should have done a floss toss with the charted colors when we when I bought this Ada, but I didn't. So where it's substantially lighter, it's fine. This color and I'm just going to pull out all the losses because I brought them in here. They're all really cute. Um, some of these, by the way, they're so... By the time that um, we bought this, it must have been right when they were switching over because things that I bought at the same time has one that says Classic Color Works and the right next to it says Crescent Color Works. Sure. But you'll note that they're all very... They're bright and cheerful, but they're very, very pastel. There's also a couple DMCs, um, like a, there's the salmon color that I don't own I need to get. I have the orange for the bird's beak, I just didn't bring it in here. But it's of the same depth of color that we're looking at from these. Now it works out fine, the lighter color, like this green actually pops decently well. Um, I, I find that this ripe melon pops. Betty Bluebell? No. No, you... That Betty Bluebell here is the color for this flower. You can see the yellow, not so much the Betty Bluebell. And so I have really two that get lost in here the worst. So I'll just put it like this. Um, really tealy, the Betty Bluebell. And unfortunately this bird, the body is the teal, the wing is the blue. You can't see it, and we have there's more flowers further up that are in this using these colors, and again you can't see them. So my plan, if I can actually make that drive over, go to the LNS, taking the project with me, and finding basically I need a darker blue and a darker purple that stays to the idea of the project because I don't want to make it too dark. That's like my big worry, but at the same time. It needs to stand out in some way, shape, or form. I thought of originally about doing some back stitching, but I mean, look at this. There is the only back stitching that's called for in the project is the bird's legs. The rest of it is literally stitched and some French knots. And I just thought it would change the nature of the project a little too much. So I'm going to try doing the color change first and see how I feel about it. So my other piece that I'm going to drag myself to the LNS for, mostly because I need to buy fabric. I just want to say I have actually been good at not buying stash. I am so proud of myself because a lot of times when I'm not actively 
doing a hobby to still feel like I'm part of that hobby I'll just buy things but I actually had stopped buying things as well so I don't have any I don't have any just random fabric hanging around the couple pieces I do have are actually all designated for projects so I need to go pick up some fabric and I need to go stare at the wall of DMC because I do have a planned start for next month this is Modern Folk Embroidery's Ave Maria, The Annunciation. Um, it's really funny because reading the information in the back, but he um, presents it as almost like a Christmas story. Well, that's really nice. Unfortunately, the Feast of the Annunciation is on March 25th, which is in Lent, not in Christmas, but obviously, I mean, it is tied to the Christmas story. But I am going to go ahead and start this on the Feast of the Annunciation, and I need to go pick out what DMC I'm going to do it in. The model here is shown in a dark fabric with light stitching. I am probably going to do very light fabric, and I need to go pick out a color of blue for Mary. And I don't know what I'm going to do. Online color cards are kind of, a, they're a disaster, actually, like straight up. None of them look at all like the when I have colors that I know what the color is supposed to be and I can see the color and what they have on the monitor doesn't work. So I'm going to go stare at the wall of colors and figure out um, if hopefully they have 10 of a color I like in stock because I'm going to need to get about 10 skeins to do this project. But if, because I'd really like to support my LNS, but if I have to order it, it might take a while and I really, really want to start on the 25th, which is why I got to do the shopping for that this week. Anyway, um, that is really all I have going on stitching wise. I hope that you guys are having a great time stitching and that I will see you again next week. Take care. Happy stitching. Bye.